All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I'm not sure how many people will show up to this because the mainstream that I had linked, uh, for some reason, is not letting me create a live broadcast on that link. I don't know why. Um, so I don't, I don't know what's going on exactly. So I had to make another live stream, another different stream. So I'm not sure if that's going to come up. So, uh, so yeah, I got a couple people watching now and I, I, I think that maybe all that's going to happen because the original stream wasn't working. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to wait a little bit for some, some people to come in, but again, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's going to happen, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, basically what I wanted to do in this little, little this little broadcast here is to kind of go over the Apple announcements because I watched them. Uh, and I, I wanted to make sure that uh, I kind of talk about some stuff for uh, for, for photographers and uh, specifically. So I wanted to kind of do that too. Um, but uh, again, I'm still gonna wait for other others to get here for a second, uh, just in case, just in case I get lucky. <laughs> um, and I'm not gonna go through the trouble of pushing out another broadcast or, or something like that, uh, but I'm still checking the other Still checking the other social media accounts here. Yeah, it's still not allowing me to join the other other event that I created. So I got to work that out. But uh, if people who are out there in chat, if you guys can let me know that everything's uh, looking good, sounding good, um, just let me know if that's if that's coming through okay. So I can make sure I at least got that part taken care of. Uh, while you guys are doing that, I'm checking some other things here. All right, cool. Thanks, Gary. All right, yeah, I think I'm going to. Uh, I don't want to keep everybody too long because I, you know, I didn't really want to start a live broadcast at 10. If I if I would have thought about it, I would have actually done this while the podcast or while the while the keynote was going on, um, and just done a live broadcast that way, like everybody else. But um, but I wanted to make sure people, you know, who were were at work might be able to catch it later. So. Um, let's go and get into it, I guess. I think I guess I'm going to talk about this. I got another camera set up over here. I don't know what looks better. Hey, how you doing? Uh, so, so I might play with that one as well. I'm going to switch back to this one real quick. Um, but uh, the first thing I want to talk about with this keynote uh, was, was something that was kind of special. And that was the, uh, the actual dedication that was at the beginning of the, the keynote. Uh, really great. I really enjoyed that. Um, it was all about a dedication to the the plaza, um, uh, the 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 campus or the park, I think they call it, and showing the uh, the new the new new uh, theater, I guess is what they're calling it, Steve Jobs Theater. I thought that was really great um, because um, I don't know why I I, I I don't know why, but I've always kind of admired Steve Jobs. Um, I, I imagine like a lot, of, a lot of other Apple fanboys because I guess you would consider me an Apple fanboy. I got an Apple Watch. I got iPhone. I got an iPad over here. I got a MacBook. I got an iMac here. Um, got an Apple TV downstairs. So I guess I would be considered an Apple fanboy. Um, but I really I really looked up to his, um, his business practice, I guess, uh, and the fact that he kind of cared about the details and you know I, I think I try to care about the details as much as I can um, without you know without having tons of other people around me who are uh, who are employees because I don't have any employees obviously so as one man can do I try to help pay attention to the details and he is um, someone that really did that and I'm really really looking forward to uh, to more announcements to come out of that theater uh, and uh, and and see kind of how things progress with him, uh, with with his vision of Apple. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that. the uh, the The first thing I kind of want to talk about is uh, the the uh, retail stores that they talked about. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go over all this 
you know, it, it, and it just as much as they did because they probably took like 45 minutes to go over all this. But the real t- retail stores that they're doing now are amazing. Really, um, really enjoy that. Uh, oh, oh, I just got a uh, just got a just got a note on the other page. So let me change that over uh, real quick before I go on. I knew this would happen, man. I knew this would happen. All right. So I think I'm going to close that out so I don't get distracted again. (laughs) Um, but yeah, so uh, the the retail stores that they're doing, I like what they're doing. It's not it's not a store, and I guess if you're a company that has billions upon billions of dollars, you can afford to do this. But they're making making stores that are um, they're they're not stores. They're they're greeting places. They're meeting places. They're they're social gathering events, places like that where they can do them, where the the space is not limiting them. Uh, it's a really really cool thing where they have tables set up and. You can get restaurant uh, restaurant for quality food and, and and all that kind of stuff. You can do all that fun stuff. I think it was a really cool thing to to see, because as someone who would actually use a space like that and um, go to a, a nice place where you can sit down and you know people always sit down at like Starbucks and do work. If there was a place like that around here and I had I have a little bit of free time, I would not mind doing that at all. I think that's a great. Uh, a great thing to do so uh, that's about all I'm going to touch as far as the retail so I'm going to hop into the products now the products that are that really stood out to me um, you know because this this event was all about the iPhone the product that really stood out to me was the uh, the watch and the reason it stood out to me is because I think that one uh, that watch had the most advancement uh, real world advancement I guess had the most advancement out of all the products that were announced so they announced the watch the new apple tv and the new iphone 8 and iphone x or what they're calling iphone 10 uh, which i'll get into that in a second it's weird uh so (laughs) so they uh they announced all that stuff and uh the the watch was great because the watch actually uh you can you know make calls without your phone it kind of gets to that point where you know this could be the stepping stone where we don't have a a phone we don't have you know this guy carrying around all the time we have um, you know we have just little little things like this and that could be something that was that could be really cool going forward because obviously they can't all you can't pack a ton of features into the watch you're not gonna see somebody taking a, a photo of a group or something like that doing this it's not possible um, but it's it's kind of a cool thing to to think about how that could be a stepping to, stepping stone to something else uh, and so <laughs> yeah thanks Gary I am getting fancy now that you mentioned that I'm actually going to switch to that camera as well I'm gonna talk to this camera so <laughs> so um, so yeah that was really cool uh, you can you can make uh, phone phone calls directly from your watch without having your phone with you which makes a really great kind of thing the only thing that uh, is is um, not concerning but I don't think a lot of people are thinking about and they uh, they touched on it a little bit and that is the fact that you probably need a, uh, a new a new plan for your your watch so you might need to get a new you know how we all have uh, data plans for for the phones uh, you might need to also get a cell and data plan for your watch so that's something that a lot of not, not a lot of people probably will think about, but when they get the watch with the the cellular built in, they'll probably have to get a cell plan to go with that, and that could up the cost. And you know, you know, you know, we all know how cell phone companies work. They'll they'll uh, jack up the cost, and they'll do all kinds of stuff. So uh, that's not something not a lot of people think about, but I think it's actually kind of cool. And the the thing that kind of disturbed me a little bit about the watch. Was that little red dot on the uh, on the dial here? There's a little the little little crown right there. It has a little red dot. I think that's tacky. I don't know why it's there. I don't know why it's red. Uh, I know it's probably to signify that that's a version three or something, but uh, it's 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 red and it's just it's very tacky. Uh, I think it should maybe be like a darker gray or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I just think that's I just think that's kind of tacky. So. Um, but yeah, that's all for the Apple Watch. I think it was a really great, a really great upgrade for that. I won't be getting one of those. I won't be getting anything that was announced. 
in this keynote. Um, but uh, I think that was a really cool upgrade. The Apple TV was next. The Apple TV was um, was one of those things where I think it was a stepping stone to something else that could happen. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, it was a Apple 4K TV um, uh, where you can watch 4K movies as HDR video, with which, which sounded kind of cool, but then when I saw it, I don't know why I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. Uh, at least the samples that they show. Uh, if I ever have a chance to look at one, I will probably change my tone a little bit. But just by the pictures they shown, they weren't really that great. So, uh, yeah. So the Apple TV was an Apple 4K TV, and, and you can get 4K movies and videos and also HDR movies and videos for free if you bought them from the Apple Store before. You get all that content. Um, so uh, that was a pretty small upgrade but it was it could be something again a lot of uh, I think a lot of Apple things a lot of Apple products uh, unless it's like two or three years apart it's not that huge of a jump and you know I I, I don't know about you guys uh, maybe out there in chat I don't know about you guys but if you if you took part if you happen to have an iPhone if you took part in that uh, that plan where you get to have uh, a, a new upgrade every year for a, a monthly cost. I kind of think that's a waste. Um, I, I was okay with it in the beginning because I was like, yeah, it'd be cool to have an iPhone every other year uh, or every year and, and not have to wait every other year for your contract to roll out. Uh, I, I think it's kind of a waste because, um, you know, you still have – you have to pay off half of the phone uh, before you can even upgrade. So if you if the phone comes out, if you get a, a iPhone in six months or something like that and – uh, and then the new iPhone comes out eight months later. You still have enough time to, to you have to still have four more months to pay off your phone before um, before you can up actually upgrade at that cost. And there's still an upgrade fee and all that kind of stuff. So I don't I don't really think it's a, a good plan. So uh, I think personally, when me and my wife <laughs> we, our plan runs out, we're gonna try to get rid of that because the the monthly cost is is not justified in any way so um so yeah the the phone thing uh first of all they came out with the iphone uh let's go to iphone 8 first because that was kind of like the minimal thing i was actually very underwhelmed uh let me go back here and make sure i'm doing this right yeah uh, i was actually very underwhelmed with the iphone 8 uh especially when it comes to the design because uh it looks almost exactly like this guy this is the iPhone 7 um, yeah iPhone 7 uh, it looks almost exactly like that and uh, the features are pretty much the same minus the wireless charging and minus the like back display the back glass which allows for wireless charging um, and it does have a new camera uh, it does have a new aperture for the camera and let me see I have my notes pulled up so Hey, let's switch to this camera. <laughs> I'm all about switching. This is kind of fun. So let's switch to this camera. We'll go to the desktop and me. So uh, so yeah, this was the iPhone 8. Uh, and I'm going to click on here so you guys can see. Uh, you know, again, this was the back glass that was that, that allows for the iPhone to have wireless charging. Uh, the, the camera does have a new aperture. Uh, it is water resistant, water and dust resistant. Here's the uh, glass charging showing the uh, wireless uh, wireless charging there it does have a true tone hd display i don't know how i feel about that um because someone who is very uh, technically savvy can probably correct me on this but as someone who knows barely nothing so i'm very qualified to to give this judgment barely uh, barely knows anything about this it let's say you take a photo because this corrects your white balance this has has to do a lot with white balance let's say you take a photo and you go to edit your photo in, in Snapseed or uh, Lightroom Mobile or something like that if it messes with your white balance on your screen would it not mess with your the how your photo how your photo is displayed in the white balance of your photo um, again I don't know someone can definitely correct me on that but again I don't know if that's the that's the case um, but yeah, uh, that's something that I would I would not like uh, if if that did mess with a photo. Um, let's see. Let's check the chat real quick. Uh, let's see. Hey, Michael, how you doing? Um, uh, animated emojis was the best part of the keynote. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Animated emojis. I'm going to get into that in just a second. Animated emojis was really, really kind of fun. Uh, actually, I just had a tweet come through. Did I not have a tweet come through? One second. Okay. Uh, sorry. People are saying they can't find the other link. Uh, for those who just joined, uh, the other link wasn't working for some reason, and I, it wouldn't let me join it, so I had to create a new broadcast. Um, so, so yeah, it was um, animated emojis. I'm going to get into that in a second. But the, uh, the iPhone uh, camera was new. Uh, I do like the camera, the, the fact that they're saying that it's faster, uh, faster autofocusing. Uh, video stabilization or image and video statement stabilization um, that would be really nice to have as well uh, portrait mode uh, everybody thinks the portrait mode uh, I think you have to have the iPhone 8 plus to have the portrait mode uh, portrait mode in this portrait lighting thing I, I think it's a gimmick um, I think the portrait mode is a gimmick I under I understand what it does you know it it, it makes the background more blurry because I imagine it's very hard to have a blurry, uh, a more bokeh background with that small of a sensor. So maybe they have to use the dual camera system to do that. Um, but uh, you know, it, the images do come out good. But I don't know if that warrants getting another device for that reason. The portrait lighting, uh, the portrait lighting. I think that's kind of a gimmick too. Uh, I understand that it, you know, it, what it kind of does is kind of creates lighting effects based on um, the, the, the lighting, the, the studio lighting effect. This is all, you know, they're trying to mimic a studio lighting setup, which I get what they're trying to do, but it, to me it doesn't doesn't come off that, that well. Um, and uh, the way Phil Schiller, when he was talking about it, said that he challenged the team to do something uh, like, like they did with the portrait mode, but Trying to, trying to try to challenge the a, a new feature in this new phone and that's what they came up with was the portrait lighting i think it's it, it might be it might be good i have no idea uh but again i don't know if it's a uh i don't know if it's more of a gimmick like the portrait mode was i think um i don't i don't ever plan on getting the iphone uh i guess 8 plus now i don't ever plan on getting the iphone 8 plus um because it, the, the screen would just be too big and I don't want to have anything to do with that part of it but the I imagine with that dual camera system that's what you have to have and it just seems it just seems gimmicky uh, I'm gonna go back to me because I don't want to mess with all the screen there <laughs> um, but yeah the the iPhone 8 was a little bit underwhelming um, and you know if you have an, a later iPhone I'm not trying to give you guys advice but I'm trying to what what, what I personally think uh, if you have a later iPhone, like I have a 7, if, even if you have a 6 Plus, I'm actually, the other camera that I'm recording here, which you're not going to be able to tell, but that camera is actually an iPhone as well. Um, that camera is a iPhone 6 Plus? Uh, no, iPhone 6S. Yeah, iPhone 6S. That one is an iPhone 6S, and I use it mainly as a... Uh, mic pack like a, a, a radio pack to, to put a lavalier mic on uh, I mainly use it as that and sometimes I'll take photos with it and the photos actually turn out pretty decent on that camera so you know it, it just depends on on what how, how deep you want to go in this ecosystem um, so now let's go to the the big boy of the show and that was the iPhone 8 so let me go back there Make sure I get all these details right. And this is why I should have done this live broadcast while the event was going on because uh, I forgot some of this stuff from, from 1 o'clock when it aired our time up until now. Forgot some of this stuff. Uh, so obviously the, the, that design is, is brand new. So let me go back to my screen here. That design, brand new. Uh, and everybody seems to be complaining about this little notch at the top. I don't, I don't get it. Um, I know a lot of other phones have uh, have a full top to bottom screen, uh, and it, it seems to be it seems to be just fine. And there's not a little notch there, but uh, the notch actually doesn't bother me whatsoever. So I don't know what what some people are thinking about that one. But you know, let me know in chat if it bothers you guys just by looking at the photo. Uh, I don't think it looks that bad. Uh, I think it actually looks pretty pretty nice, and it makes sense because they have to fit like 
what they said like 12 sensors up here uh so it makes it makes sense to put something uh put something up there but uh obviously this is an all new design um and this is going to be something that is kind of what they talked about as being a uh the, the future of smartphones going forward that totally makes sense because I think the next iteration of iPhones are not going to look like this. Like, it's not going to look like the 7. It's not going to look like the 8. It's going to look more closely to the iPhone 10 or X or whatever they're going to call it. And it's obviously going to have those features in there as well. So, uh, so yeah, the OLED display, uh, very cool display, vibrant colors, rich textures, very cool. Love that feature. Uh, would love to see all this up, up close. Um, and uh, we'll talk about the camera at the end here because that's going to run run through all this stuff. The new gestures without the phone, as you can see here, new gestures without or not new gestures without the phone, new gestures without the home button. Uh, I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with that. Um, the only part that might trip me up is I know on the iPhone that I have right now, it's happened more often than not where uh, it it will it will freeze on me and I have to do I have to do the whole home button hold the hold the side button hold the power button and hold the home button for the three seconds or ten seconds or whatever it is and force the restart of the phone I know I have to do that sometimes so uh, since there's no home button down here I don't know how exactly that works so um, you know if it's if something in the software is will freeze if it, if it will mess up in the software a bug or something like that then you know that could be a uh, that could be an issue. I'm sure they fix it with the home button here on the side, but again, that could be uh, that could be an issue there as well. Um, let's see. We'll talk about that camera, like I said at the end. Uh, face detection, yes, 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 and emojis. Michael's favorite, <laughs> and the camera. Uh, yeah, well, let me talk about this camera part real quick. Uh, the camera, uh, 12 megapixel, 12 megapixel camera, just like the iPhone 8. Except it has uh, the the one camera, the wide angle camera has a 1.8 aperture, which I think the other one does as well. The iPhone 8 does as well. Uh, but the other camera, the telescopic camera or telephoto camera uh, lens, whatever it is, um, that has a 2.8. That's really cool. Uh, that'll definitely help with low light. That'll definitely help with the uh, the bokeh as well. Uh, I would hope. Um, all right, so now let's get into the the main part, which I think everybody was talking about was uh, the uh, front-facing camera, which is the the um, uh, what are they calling it? Face ID. That's it. Uh, and everybody's talking about it not because it failed on stage. So if you guys if, if you guys watched the the live stream, uh, if you guys watched that, you saw a, a Craig Federighi up there, and he picked up one of the phones. Um, this is something that hardly ever happens in Apple, so I don't know why they didn't catch this real quick. Um, but uh, he held up the, the iPhone to do the face detection, the face ID, and it, it stopped. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't read it. Um, but if you zoom in, uh, if you zoom in uh, and pause it, right when that happens, they show a picture of him holding the phone uh, like this. Let me show you. The whole, he was holding the phone just like this up to his face, and he kind of tilted it down when it did that. Uh, the iPhone read the message read that uh, a passcode is required. It's required at uh, after a restart. So apparently, what I think happened was the phone was restarted before the event, or something happened to where the phone got restarted. And uh, everybody knows who has an iPhone when you have when you restart it, you can't just put your thumbprint on there right now or anything like that. You actually have to uh, type in your passcode. So I'm thinking that's what happened. Face ID recognized that the iPhone was restarted and the passcode was required so it wouldn't let him read it so when he switched to the, the backup phone that seemed to work just fine and uh, everything was good but yeah the face ID I think that is something that is going to be very cool to see in real in real life I'm, I'm curious how well it actually works um, I was curious the same thing about the fingerprint scanner I even tried to fake my fingerprint a couple times to see if I could get into my own phone just to play around with it, uh, and it never worked. So uh, I'm really curious to see how the Face ID comes out, and because of that Face ID, the, 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 the technology that's in that Face ID, the tracking, the sculpting, the true, the true depth camera, because of all that, you're able to do uh, fun things like this little guy 
like the uh, little emojis, the the animojis is what they're calling them. I actually think that's kind of fun because it kind of brings into that whole era of the whole Snapchat and Instagram filters and all that kind of stuff where you can, you know, picture yourself talking. And, you know, you used to be able to send a video to your friend of, uh, you know, you talking with a mask on or something like that. So you're going to be able to do that now, but you're going to be able to do it with an emoji and you're probably going to be able to do it with a lot more accuracy than you were before. Uh, so that's kind of, that's, I'm actually really, really uh, excited to see how, how that, uh, how that works, but also how that evolves uh, to other technologies. Because again, a lot of things that Apple puts out, I, in, in, a, in a way, in a way, I think Phil kind of touched on this, uh, and I don't remember the exact moment, um, but he talked on this when uh, he was talking. I think maybe you're talking about a, a VR or, or not? Well, not, not VR, uh, AR, augmented reality. I think he was talking about that, where he said, I can't wait to see what all the other developers do with this technology. And kind of what that plays to me is, you know, they they plant the seed of, of the technology. They, they develop the technology, but then they expect or they um, sort of rely or uh, encourage uh, all the other developers out there that are creating apps to to just go for it and and take that tech technology to the next level. So I think he, I think Phil, I'm pretty sure it was Phil, Phil actually talked about that, uh, and uh, I think that kind of rings true for a lot of the things they talk about. You know, when they released the, the 3D touch on the phone where you press hard, when they did that whole thing, um, you know, it's almost like when, when they did that, they released the feature of the live photos. Uh, when, when they released that, that was just to show what that 3D touch can do. It wasn't actually like a, a really hardcore, awesome feature. It was just to show what that technology can do to encourage everybody else to take it to the next level, to, to do something else great with it and not just, you know, hey, you can press on the icon and take a selfie or something, you know, just something stupid like that. It's, it's all about... It's all about the uh, the technology behind it and what they can do with it. So, um, so uh, let me go to chat here. I'm kind of kind of almost done. I just kind of wanted to run through some of that and kind of get everybody else's um, everybody else's thoughts about it. So, uh, Gary, Michael, what do you guys got? What do you guys got? Uh, Michael said he likes the design. So you like the design of the eight or the uh, the iPhone X? Uh, is that the which one do you like here? And that's another thing. That's another thing that that kind of tricks me up about this. I don't know why, you know, they call it, obviously, uh, let me switch back here. They obviously call this iPhone X or iPhone 10 for the Roman numeral. Um, they, they, they call it that. I wish they just would have called it iPhone X um, because iPhone 10 doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I know it makes any sense. I know it makes sense as far as 10 year anniversary. Um, you know, it's the it's iPhone started in 2007, it's 2017. It, I know that part makes sense. But when you think of the naming conventions, you go from the iPhone 8, you combine iPhone 8 to an iPhone 10. So is there going to be an iPhone 9? Uh, and if there is an iPhone 9, is there going to be an iPhone 11 after that? Like, do you just skip 10 for that reason? So, either they messed up in the naming convention. Yeah, dude, I, I like the uh, Michael. <laughs> uh, I like, I like, I definitely like the design of X more. But to me, the iPhone eight definitely feels like a the same thing I'm always getting. Which the design is not bad. It just seems like the same thing we're always getting. Um, but yeah, I just think the naming convention they messed up somewhere. You know, maybe when they started doing the the number S's, they messed up. Uh, because you know, if they would have just kept going from one, two, three, four, all the way across, everything would have fell in line and been ten. You know, so I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, that that kind of it's kind of weird. It was already hard to follow the naming conventions of the phone because of the whole 4s, 4s plus, 5 5s, 5se. You know, all of that stuff. It was already hard to follow all of that. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. But, uh, but yeah, that's my main run through of that. I just kind of wanted to talk about that real quick just because, you know, I, mainly, to be completely honest with you guys, 
all I wanted to do was try a live event again. <laughs> and it, it didn't work out that well uh, because I have to uh, have to figure out why it didn't let me join uh, the other event because I'm pretty sure I lost some um, some viewers on that one. But this will be saved. Uh, this will be saved for the uh, watch back feature, whatever the heck it's called. It'll be saved for that. So, uh, yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about. Just kind of wanted to run through this real quick. And uh, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna kind of go through chat a little bit. So, uh, I always like uh, Michael saying, I always like Apple's designs. Just disappointed Apple isn't invent, uh, an innovative anymore. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I definitely agree. I think, uh, I, I think again, um, you know, they're 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 doing the the same thing that Apple always seems to do. Um, you know, minus a couple big things. You know, they're they're in, innovating enough to create a little bit of hype, but not innovating enough to where you know a year later they're not. You know they're not stuck and they don't know what to do um, because you know the whole thing where um, you know Android users and and all this kind of stuff all the all these features are pretty much already existing the way I kind of think about Apple is they they do a lot of great things and they they make it work right uh, I would rather I would rather have a feature be delayed in an iPhone and have it work 95% of the time then have an Android phone and it might work off and on or something might happen with it or I mean I've, I've never I've had one Android device and I sent it back because it just was not a good good device um, and I don't know if it was the limitations of the actual device or the software I have no idea but it was uh, it was not a good a good Android experience for for me so yeah I they're, they're not innovating enough um, um, they're not innovating enough to 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 move technology forward at a rapid pace. Um, I mean, just just for the fact of the uh, the wireless charging, it took them forever to do that. And also, what I'm almost positive, I'm definitely certain of this, almost, is that the wireless charging you don't get wireless charging with the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 10. You get um, you get uh, you get the ability to do that. So you don't. It doesn't come with a wireless charger. You have to buy a separate wireless charger or uh, one from Apple, which is that um, what's it called? Pow Air Power. Uh, you have to buy that eventually, or you can buy a third-party one. Uh, and they mentioned that a couple times. Third-party chargers uh, from from other companies, and you know you kind of rely on it that way. So. You know, I, I think they're doing some things right. I think they're doing some things that are a bit weird and a bit wonky. But overall, um, you know, it's it's it all comes down to personal preference. The ecosystem is kind of what I like to be in. I like that everything on my, on my Mac works with everything on the iPad, works with everything on the iPhone. Uh, I can stream stuff from my Apple TV, from my computer. I love all of that stuff. So, you know, it's all about picking one ecosystem and kind of playing with it and staying in that ecosystem so uh, Gary said I can't afford all the new tech stuff anymore since I retired it's cool though yeah <laughs> yeah well I'm Gary I'm not retired I still can't afford it <laughs> so uh, so yeah I'm I like for example this iPad this iPad right here this is a iPad 2 this is the second the second iPad ever ever released and it's uh, you know it's still sort of works sometimes it's still jittery so yeah I don't know I don't know what happened uh, with <laughs> with buying new new products but uh, but yeah definitely got the iPhone I got an iMac or a, I got an, a new iMac actually but um, a, a MacBook from 2010 I think uh, and it sometimes works it's slow on some things but overall it does the trick so so yeah, I mean it. You know, you don't. The way I'm starting to think about it, which is kind of the, how I came, I, I went away from it. But I'm starting to think about it being, um, starting to think about it being like, uh, you know, maybe every two or three years, that's when upgrades should happen. Uh, you know, depending on on your case. So that even goes for the phones. I know they release a new phone every year, but when you really think about it, you know, you're not getting much from the phone. 
uh, from departing from the one that you have. Obviously, if you have an iPhone 4, 4S or 5S or something like that, you're probably going to benefit. But you know, two or three years down the road is not that big of a not that big of a wait. So, uh, so yeah, uh, that's all I'm going to cover for the phones. Uh, hope everybody who hasn't listened to the podcast. Uh, that I released today can go back and listen to that. Got some sad news <laughs> for for that one, but I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to end it now, and I'm going to try to figure out why the show did not work the original show uh, before I uh, before I head to bed. <laughs> so uh, uh, guys, thank you for joining me, Gary, Michael. Thank you for joining me in the in the show. It was fun. Always good to see you guys. Uh, oh, Gary said, for the most part, I don't even use my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think um, I heard a I heard a stat where, uh, on, based on Gary's thing, um, uh, heard a stat on Gary's uh, on Gary's topic here that people nowadays with um, with the phones can actually not even make a phone call. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk on Gary's thing and then I'm gonna head off. But they don't even make a phone call within a week. You know, they rely on texting or they, they, uh, uh, you know, social media and stuff. Uh, so the the thought of actually using a quote unquote phone is just is is out. I know you probably meant using your phone in general, but but yeah, I, I heard a, uh, the stat about that where the, uh, the average American doesn't actually use the phone for a phone. Uh, might not even make a call within a week. So that's kind of something to, uh, you know, they're, they're going away from phones and being uh, pocket computers, basically. That's all they're going to be now. So, uh, all right, thanks, you guys. I'm going to head off here and try to figure this whole technical difficulties out. Uh, but thank you guys for joining me, and uh, maybe I'll see you in the next podcast or the <laughs> not podcast. Maybe I'll see you in the next live broadcast where I actually get it, get it right. So uh, thank you guys. <laughs>